Super Mario World was one of the first games to be released on the Super Nintendo. It was the first game I ever played, and I've probably beaten it 50 times by now. People who are subscribed to my channel uh, don't really need an introduction to the game, since I myself make Super Mario World ROM hacks, and I'm currently working on a really big one. But in this video I'm not gonna talk about ROM hacks, except a few mentions. Today I'm gonna cover the Super Mario World Iceberg. For those of you who don't know what an iceberg chart is, it's basically a tier list of trivia, secrets and maybe even theories about a specific kind of thing, like a video game, a movie or anything else. The further down they are, the more unknown and obscure they are. Iceberg charts have fascinated me ever since the Super Mario 64 iceberg from last year. And so, I have created my own iceberg for Super Mario World. There already exists one, but it's more of a meme creepypasta one. I actually created an old iceberg about the game, but most of the entries were just jokes and creepypasta material. But then a friend of mine, TikTok Clock on Discord, made an even bigger and better iceberg. While it is interesting, most of the entries are just made up or jokes or like I said, creepypasta material. And so I did my own research and took a few of the entries from his iceberg and put them in mine. So special thanks to TikTok Clock for making that iceberg. So without further ado, let's dive right in into the Super Mario World iceberg. Credits Warp Super Mario World has a glitch that, when triggered, warps you directly to the credits. This glitch can be used for speedruns and currently streamer Furious holds the world record for beating Super Mario World with zero exits and with the credit warp. Isofreeze and Seth Bling made videos explaining this glitch, so I recommend watching those. I'll put the links in the description. Yoshi Sacrifices Players often sacrifice Yoshi to save themselves from pits or lava by jumping off of him. This has kind of become a meme, especially in Kaizo Hex, where jumping off of Yoshi is mandatory in some cases. Laser Suit There is an old video on YouTube about a hidden power-up called the Laser Suit that can be reached from the top secret area by finding a secret pipe. With the laser suit you can float like with the cape and shoot lasers. This power up however is fake and is simply a ROM hack, but the video managed to fool a lot of people, including me when I was a kid. Invisible one-up triggers. In some of the levels in Super Mario World, there are four invisible one-up triggers that, when touched in order, spawn a one-up similar to the invisible 1-up triggers in Super Mario 64. These can be viewed in the Super Mario World editor Lunar Magic. Some of them are so well hidden that I didn't even know they existed. Special World Palette and Graphics When you beat the final level in the Special World, the Overworld Palette and some of the enemy graphics change. The Overworld changes to this weird brown and green look and the Koopas, Piranha Plants and Bullet Bills now look like Mario, Pumpkins and Pidgeots. The Game Boy Advance version of the game, Super Mario Advance 2, actually changes two other enemies as well. The Gloombas become yellow and wear sunglasses, and the Pokies become a weird spiky saw thing. Don't know what it's supposed to be. Exploits and glitches used in ROM hacks. Super Mario World has tons and tons of glitches, exploit and unintended behaviors. There is a full list on Super Mario World Central. Some of these glitches can actually be useful and can be used for very weird and obscure gimmicks, especially in harder hacks like Kaizo and Pit Hacks. Super Mario Bros. 1 theme in Special World When you wait long enough in the Special World, the music will change to the iconic Super Mario Bros. theme. Take a listen. Hey. 
Edible Dolphins in Japanese version. In the Japanese version of Super Mario World, uh, you were able to eat the dolphins with Yoshi. This was removed from all the other versions of the game due to cultural differences. However, in the Game Boy Advance version, you are able to eat the dolphins in all of the versions. Birdcage There is an unused layer 3 effect in the game that can still be activated in Lunar Magic. It's speculated that this was originally a cage that's being carried by Blue Jays, an unused sprite from the game. More on that later. Peaking Big Boo When you look at the Big Boo for long enough, he will peek to see if Mario is still there. Similar to the smaller Boos that make a crazy face when you look at them long enough. Overworld Koopalings There are unused sprites on the overworld that look like Iggy. These actually had a purpose. They were used to drag you into levels, much like the hands in the 8th world of Super Mario Bros. 3. Giga League content On July 24, 2020, a bunch of source code from Nintendo's early consoles surfaced as well as prototypes and assets from Super Nintendo games. The leak included a portion of Super Mario World source files with an absurd amount of early assets. In this iceberg I'm only gonna mention a couple of entries from the Giga League since there's way too much to cover. You can look at the leak content yourself in the cutting room floor. I'll leave a link to the page in the description. NES Bootleg This is an unlicensed port of Super Mario World for the NES. Most levels are copied almost exactly, but there's still a lot of missing stuff. I haven't played it myself, but I heard that the physics are pretty awful. And what's also awful is the music. Most of the songs aren't even that accurate. But other than that, I think it's a pretty decent bootleg. Clapping Mario credits. Immediately after beating Bowser, holding the up button will cause Mario to do a weird clapping animation in the credits. Some people think it's an easter egg, but it's actually a glitch. Fellow Super Mario World hacker and ASM coder Kevin M posted an explanation on why this happens. I'll let you read it yourself, since I'm not that experienced with ASM. Blue J and Lakitu Previously I mentioned an unused layer 3 effect of a bird cage. This same bird actually still exists in the game and can be inserted with lunar magic, as well as a Lakitu. The Lakitu only follows you around on the main map, while the bird can follow you on all maps except Vanilla Dome, probably because he has trouble getting inside it. No Yoshi entrances. Similarly to the cutscenes when you enter a castle or ghost house with Yoshi, there are unused cutscenes where Mario jumps off Yoshi with a no Yoshis allowed sign. This can still be activated in Lunar Magic, but only when a specific tile set is used in the level, specifically the rope tile set with all the mushrooms, ropes and those weird vegetable things. Beta Yoshi Before the Giga Leak, people have discovered an early design of Yoshi. And in the Giga Leak, they have discovered even more scrap designs of Yoshi. One of the designs looks pretty similar to one of the sketches of Mario riding a dinosaur that Miyamoto had on his desk since the development of Super Mario Bros. He wanted to implement a rideable dinosaur since the first game, but couldn't due to the NES's limitations at the time. Red Switch in Valley of Bowser There is an unused red switch in Valley of Bowser that can be seen in Lunar Magic. Entering it just puts you in a test level. The devs likely moved the red switch to Vanilla Dome because the player would have little to no need for red switch blocks by this point in the game. Islands on the main map There are three islands on the main map that serve no purpose. Two of them are next to Forest of Illusion and Chocolate Island, and one of the islands is about Donut Plains, where the laser suit is believed to be. 
There are most likely no secrets about these islands. The devs probably just put them there to make the map look more interesting and not as empty. But it's fun to speculate. 96 plus exits. The maximum amount of exits to finish the game 100% is 96. However, with some glitches, it's possible to get more than 96 exits. There is a playlist on YouTube showing how to get those exits. I'll leave a link in the description. Mirrored Water Tiles On the overworld, next to Vanilla Secret 1 and Ludwig's Castle, there are water tiles that have been flipped horizontally. This led me to joke around that the devs have used Lunar Magic or a similar tool to make the overworld and simply reused some landmass and flipped it. Morton's Plains There is an unused level in the game with the name Number 2 Morton's Plains. It's unknown what this level could have been. Checking the level in Lunar Magic, it's just a duplicate of Donut Plains 1 with a glitch background. Speaking of Donut Plains 1, this level actually has two duplicates. The ID for Donut Plains 1 is 15, and the IDs for the dupes are 16 and 17, 17 being Morton's Plains. Yoshi's Paw Print In Yoshi's house there is a message left by Yoshi. At the end of the message you can see a paw print. Does this mean that Yoshi originally had paws instead of just green hands? I tried to look around for a promotional art of Yoshi showing his hand, but no luck. SNES Test Program The SNES Test Program is one of four discovered cartridges once used by Nintendo World Class Servers to test problems with the SNES and controllers. Interestingly, one of these cartridges used assets from Super Mario World, specifically beta assets. Mario walks on unrevealed path in commercial. In one of the American commercials for Super Mario World, Mario is walking from Vanilla Dome 3 to the ghost house, even though the path hasn't been revealed yet. The devs probably used a debug code to walk around freely on the overworld to capture footage, and just didn't notice they put that footage in. Valley of Bowser location If you look at Valley of Bowser, it doesn't really make sense. The entrance suggests that it's somewhere underground, and so do the pipes in Donut Plains and Chocolate Island. But according to Google, a valley is a low area of land between hills or mountains, typically with a river or stream flowing through it. Another thing that doesn't make sense is the thunder. How exactly is there thunder underground? It could also be possible that the entrance to Bowser's Valley is an entrance to a cave at all, but a portal that teleports you to the valley. But hey, it's a video game. It doesn't need to make sense. Big level dots. In the overworld, there are two types of level dots, yellow and red ones. Yellow levels have one exit, and the red ones have two. But there are also these bigger dots that also can be yellow and red. No one really knows what they're supposed to mean. Sometimes there are big level dots after a level that saves your progress. For example, Vanilla Dome 1 and 3 and Forest of Illusion 1, since the levels before them are castles and ghost houses. But this isn't always the case. Donut Plains 1 isn't a big dot. Neither is Chocolate Island 1 and so on. Weirdly enough, Valley of Bowser 2 has a big dot instead of the first one. I don't know, it's weird. The ghost ship is a Super Mario Bros. 3 airship. According to the instruction manual, the sunken ghost ship is nothing more than one of Super Mario Bros. 3 airships, which eventually crashed in the sea. This is also the only level in Super Mario World where the green orb is found, which also showed up when you beat Boom Boom in Super Mario Bros. 3. Chocolate Island 3 Glitch There is a glitch that can be performed in Chocolate Island 3. If you get to the goal while you're big and while the camera is still at the very bottom, during the transition, the colors will start to flash and it will completely mess up the overworld palette. The overworld won't fix itself unless you use a Star Warp pipe or enter a level or just simply restart the game. 42-11 videos secret levels 
There is a YouTube channel that used to upload videos about discovering secret glitched levels in Super Mario World. I watched one of them as a kid and actually believed it and tried it out myself. Of course, the whole thing is fake, unsurprisingly. They made 8 videos about discovering some quote-unquote secrets, although two of those videos are not about Super Mario World. I leave a link to the playlist in the description. Kappa Mountain. In the same instruction manual where we read about the sunken ghost ship, the mountain where the yellow switch is located is actually called Kappa Mountain. Kappas are mythical creatures in Japanese folklore. They are depicted as green, human-like beings with a turtle shell on their back. The bottom part of the mountain in Yoshi's Island actually resembles the head of a kappa. Super Mario Bros. 1 Bowser Bridge in Bowser's Castle. This is something that I discovered myself. In Bowser's Castle, right before the boss door, there is a long bridge that hangs over lava. This looks a lot like Bowser's Bridge from the first Super Mario Bros. What's even more interesting is that the bridge is 13 tiles long, just like the bridges in Super Mario Bros. There are also unused sprites of Bowser outside of his clown car that have been found in the Giga League. Could these have been used as a first phase on the bridge? One thing that doesn't really make sense is the ceiling. It's way too low for a fight to take place. But hey, the devs could have lowered the ceiling once they scrapped this fight. Who knows? Final boss spoiled in commercials. There are two American commercials and one from the Netherlands where the final boss is just straight up spoiled. But it probably wasn't that big of a deal at the time as it is now, especially since the final boss was obviously going to be Bowser. And some commercials for other games have probably spoiled the final boss too. Can and Yoshi abuse. In a 2017 interview, Developers Takashi Tezuka and Shigefumi Hino talked about the creation of Super Mario World and Yoshi. In the interview, they stated how Mario was actually punching Yoshi. There even used to be a sound effect when you punched him. Super Mario World! And that was the Super Mario World Iceberg. To anyone who stuck to the end, I truly appreciate it. I'm not used to making these kind of videos, especially since my English isn't really that good. I had to make a lot of outtakes, but I made it to the end and I'm proud of that. I used to make similar videos, where I have made reviews for Super Mario World hacks, but those have been unlisted for personal reasons. But hey, maybe someday I'll put those back on and maybe I will continue making those kinds of videos. So anyway, thank you for watching. If you wanna check out my Super Mario World ROM hacks, then check out my other videos. And you can also follow me on Twitter for even more ROM hacking content. Thank you for watching and have a great day.